Today I'm going to share with you how to assemble this vanity sink and faucet from Ikea. Bottom corner we want these metal pieces like this. Should be able to just slide those in. in. So we have another bracket here. Snap those into place. Okay. So this is effectively going to be our bottom and this is going to be our back. And we need brackets. These are going to be our two metal brackets that we need next. So we're going to use these screws. These are the flat ones. You do not want, you do not want these big screws for this part. So we're going to use these screws for the brackets. Alright, so we have our two mounting brackets. they want us to do now is flip this up so we're going to carefully flip this and we'll put this piece on the bottom so we can place these mounting brackets so the short end will go towards the wall and the longer end with the hole in it will well, go over the hole so we we'll place those in place Again, we're using those flat-faced uh, screws. I'm going to put these in place, and with the Phillips, uh, we'll be able to screw those in. So I don't want to over-tighten anything in the beginning. I want to make sure I leave it a little loose, so when I put the other ones in, I'm able to line up the screw holes. So I'm going to let that loose for right now, and we'll tighten that up as we get closer to being finished with it. I'm just going to tighten these up the rest of the way. take our second mounting bracket and do the same thing. We're going to go over into this corner. So the next thing we want to do is we want to take this and this is going to go in the hole and then this is going to go inside of that once it's installed. So here we go. There's a little tab here that fits in here. Same with over here. So I'm going to put those in there right now. I have to squeeze it a little bit. There. That goes right in there. I'm going to take the big piece first, shove it in the hole. That. Do the same thing over here. Big plug, shove it in the hole. Those are just plastic pieces. Alright, so they snap in. Once they snap in, you have these little pins. These pins are going to secure it in place. So we're going to put that pin, we're going to shove it in like that. Now it's good. Same over here. Take it, shove it in the pin. There you go. So that's nice and secure. Coming over here, just flipping it upside down. So here we're going to be mounting legs. So you do have the option of getting uh, legs. Without legs, this is about 32 inches high, so it's a little low. But for our bathroom, it's it's fine. There is a leg option that you can get another like four inches to get up to 36 inches. And then the next thing is we're going to use these uh, two pieces. We're going to 
flip this down. I want to make sure that these like, little holes, the half circles, is pushed in place the appropriate area. And we're going to use these two pieces to snap that in place. So I'm going to just put that there. I'm going to snap. And in the place to hold it secure. Again, just a closer look. I'm going to slide this into the hole. And this is the little hole I'm just going to push in. Slide that in. There's a little hole here. And I'm just going to snap that in place. So that's good. So now with this set down, we're going to want a board with two holes drilled in the bottom. So I'm going to put the, the upright here. I'm just going to put a pin in here. And a pin in on the other side as well. Okay. So with this bracket, you're going to want the, the heads that are rounded off quite a bit. So we use those next. So what I've done is I've placed the vanity on a small stand that I built out of 2x8s. Uh, just made a little box to hold it up. You can also get the little feet that go under here. I just don't like seeing all the pipe work underneath the feet. So decided to build out a box. So what I've done here is, is once it's in position, I'm going to come in here. Just mark out where you're going to drill your holes. I've also found where a stud is, so I'm going to want to put at least a, uh, a hole in here as well and, and drill into the stud. I just like uh, going into a stud rather than just hanging on drywall. So being that this is 24 inches, you should have a stud every 16 inches, so at the bare minimum you should at least have one stud that you can drill into. So I'm going to be using these fairly large uh, bolts. So basically the idea is you drill in, you can push these into the wall. I'm going to use a three quarter inch uh, bit to drill the hole. When I'm done, I'm going to shove this into the hole. It's going to pop open and then I can tighten it down. This will hold on to the back of the drywall for these two locations. Again, for this one in the middle, I know this is a stud, so I'm going to just drill into that uh, with a normal um, wood screw. So, like always, safety first, wear your safety glasses. Remember when drilling into walls, there could be electrical lines or water lines, so only drill as far as you need to go. Try to limit what damage you do behind a wall. That's all I need, I don't need to keep pushing through. I'm going to squeeze this down, I'm going to shove it in that hole. It's going to spring up on the other side. I can pull it and tighten it up a little bit. If you lose this in the wall, it's gone, so uh, leave it hang out quite a bit. And make sure you remember, uh, righty tighty. So if you want to be able to righty tighty, it'll tighten it up. You can shove it through. So do the same over here. Go. Then we'll put the, the vanity back in position very carefully not to push these through and what we want to do once we get the vanity in we're going to put this over top and just slide it down. In retrospect it probably would have been easier not to put the bolts on until you put the vanity here because now I have to worry about not pushing them into the wall. If you bought this, you're probably in confined spaces like I am. Alright. 
slide this over the head of the bolt and then slide it down so it doesn't go backwards. Right. That one is on, so that won't pull back. Again, we're going to put this on here. So the, the scratchy part, the, the lip is on the back side. There you go. So if you can see that, they're both on there. Now I can start tightening this up. So all you're going to do is tighten these up. You kind of have to, in order for them to work, you have to uh, kind of pull them out a little bit. If you have smaller bolt heads, it, you should use a, a washer. Um, this is so large that with a washer I couldn't get it through here and this actually won't go through this hole without moving it to the side. So this is pretty oversized. So I'm going to take a screw and I'm going to put it right through there, but I'm going to pre-drill the hole. So one of the things you want to do is when you're getting ready to pre-drill a hole is make sure that the drill bit covers the shaft of the screw but not the actual screw part so that way uh, the screw part will hold uh, when it goes into the wall and the shaft won't have to um, separate the wood which could cause splitting so we're just going to drill into where I have it pre-marked all right that way this thing is not moving it at all. It's also a good idea to just check if it's level before you go any further. So it looks pretty good. For these, they give you little covers. So they just go on like this and then slide to the side. That makes it look more aesthetically pleasing. So what I like to do before I caulk anything is first test fit it. So the sink has been test fitted. It looks like it's good. Before you get any caulk, uh, get some wet paper towels. If you make a mess, that can be helpful. So the important thing to note with this, if you notice the real nasty looking side goes towards the wall and the nice finished side goes towards you. Now you should put this on cardboard or somewhere safe. You don't have any damage. What we're going to do is we're just going to caulk here along the top and it will rest on this Then we'll let it dry and we'll come back in a little bit. this in place, try to get it nice and even before you let it sit down. Make sure it's as flush with the wall as you can get it. I'm just going to push down a little bit. It's also a good idea to have clean surfaces. Check that before you, uh, you apply caulk. So I'm just going to run my finger underneath here. Take off any excess caulk. That's where the rags come in handy. Fingers clean. Excess on the outside. Do it on the inside. So they say you give it three hours before you do anything. The other thing I would say is caulk up here. 
reason I would caulk up here is because if you have any water that goes to the back, it's going to come back down and uh, cause issues here. So if you caulk it, it prevents water from going behind the sink. So I'm going to use this faucet with this sink type and I need a P-trap so I'm going to use this for the, the bottom of the P-trap. Now this kit does come with a little bit nicer of a drain. So you can actually close it off, you can pull this up and have it be a drain. So I'm going to use this with this, this drain. So that's where I'm going to let's go with that. And I'm still going to use the hardware for this to mount it. I'm just not going to be using these two pieces. All right. So let's get started. So the first thing I need to do is take out these two long bolts. We're going to secure them in here. And we're going to take this over. Make sure you have your little gasket in there because that's going to sit on the porcelain. Uh, you don't want metal on metal, metal on porcelain. So having the gasket there helps uh, to seal it and prevents cracking and things like that. Still don't want to crank down too much on them. Now the next thing we're going to want is when we go up underneath, when we go up underneath the uh, sink, this will go up first, this piece of rubber, and then uh, you'll put this plate on as well. And what we're going to do is when this is on the sink itself, we'll push those two through and we'll crank these up and we'll use these to, uh, to tighten that. And the way you'll do that is with the little tool that they give you. We'll go over to the sink, we do that now. So we're going to take that and actually we're going to slide these through the hole. We're also going to slide that in through the hole and position it in a way that you want to use it. So if you prefer it to be this way or slightly angled, that's up to you. Uh, it can rotate. What we're going to do is, again, we're going to put the rubber underneath and below the rubber, we'll put the metal. And once we put those underneath, we're going to tighten up these two nuts. So we'll do that next. Bear with me, it's a tight bathroom. So you might not be able to see too much. So the open side basically goes where the lines go and your two bolt, two bolts go right through here. It's a good idea. Anytime you're working around drains or anything, make sure you just cover them up. You don't want to drop anything down the drain and lose it. Once you get them tightened up pretty good, you can take your tool. Sort of like the car tire. Kind of go back and forth. Make sure they're both tightened so it's not lopsided. Alright. Okay. And I would hold on to this tool because if it ever gets loose, uh, you want to be able to retighten it. You don't want to buy that tool again. Sometimes things do come loose. Now, I believe they give you the red indication. They give you hot and then the other one is cold. So, these are not really standard lines, so I might have to get a different connection to, to link up with what I have. Um, generally, a faucet will be, you know, a um, 3 eighths to a half inch. And as you can see, that is not the size of this faucet. So I put this together. 
and configuration for a P-trap. You can see that this is very low and I need to match up here. So I'm gonna have to cut off a piece of this, pretty sizable portion. And I could, if I wanted to, cut off a little bit of this because there are, if I pull this apart, there's actually two gaskets in here. You need one gasket to make sure you have a good fit. So you can cut it between here and here. If you do cut it, the, the couple of advantages are um, you can mount it towards the back so that you don't have this much sticking out. Uh, the other thing is, if you can think about it, all the weight over the years pulling down on the drain, you might get a leak around this gasket at some point. Uh, generally, you use plumber's putty, but uh, these models use uh, rubber gaskets instead. So, give it a try and see how it goes. So, if you are going to cut it off, I'm going to cut off, basically, if I cut off here, but I also want to cut off approximately the same amount. I just want to make sure that I can slide this back in here. And you can use a handsaw or something like that. Just make sure you move. If you cut it, just make sure you remove all the burrs so that it's nice and smooth on the inside and outside. Uh, you don't want to mess up any of the gaskets. And then we're going to do the same. We're going to cut this down as well. So for this, I just need to get it approximately close. And probably somewhere around here. I give this a go. Give this a pipe cutter. Doesn't need to be perfect. And how these fit together is just there's a nut, and there's a little uh, piece of rubber in there. So in order to, to get this on the other piece, let's take those off. The nut on first, the gasket on. And I'm just gonna take and put that back on here. Like that. So no biggie. Maybe just tighten that down and that would keep that nice and snug. The uh, whole purpose of the P-trap is that you get water in here and it stays about that level. So if you see a leak, you're going to start to see it from one of these gaskets. So they need to be nice and secure. The whole purpose of P-traps are that you don't siphon the water out, which could happen in an S-trap. So a lot of new building code are requiring P-traps now. And the other reason is that um, the reason you want a water trap or uh, in, in line is sewer gas from the toilets and, and from the sewer lines can come back and into your house if there's not water blocking that air from coming back or methane or whatever else might be in there. So I'm going to cut this back a little ways. Pops off just like that. Measure where maybe take a little bit off. Yep, there we go. That way it won't fit in there. No burrs. Good. And I'll put the drain in. So with the drain kit, they give you this one instead. I came with this. Uh, I believe they gave me this one because it has a longer bolt. So it can actually reach. So again, they're using the styrofoam gasket. Put the drain underneath. Position it where we think we want it. I won't tighten it up all the way until we're ready to go. And they give you this little yellow tool to, to tighten it up with. I'm not going to tighten this up all the way until I'm absolutely sure of where I want this positioned. So I need to get uh, a couple more PVC parts. I'm 
just going to put this on here. I'm going to move the P-trap around a little bit. Try to tuck it out of the way as much as possible. So if we want to put the other one up here, we want to make sure that this is behind that. That. I'm going to have to extend this up a little bit to match up with this. We might have to cut a little bit off. So we're going to have to have our P-trap adapter. So here, I can just tighten everything down. We should be good. So I'm going to get a long 90. It's going to come here. I'm going to extend this up a little bit more to meet this. And then I'm going to have a P-trap adapter, so I'll put all that together now. So as you can see here, I'm just trying to piece this together, dry fit it, make sure everything lines up before I prime and, and start to uh, glue anything together. So it looks good. Um, another thing that's normally done, just so that you make sure everything lines up when you put it back together, just take a, a Sharpie and put lines on here. And that way you know where everything goes so when you turn it you only have a few seconds before uh, the glue starts to set up so you want to know that you're close you do your quarter turn and, and hold it in place for about 30 seconds make sure there's no push out of the glue or I should say PVC cement so what we're gonna do is make sure you prime all your parts make sure you get that purple on there uh, if you use different primer some inspectors will question whether or not it's the right primer, especially if it's larger pipe, uh, because there is a clear primer and glue, but it's only intended for very small pipes. And in a lot of localities, they won't accept it. So I'm just going to want to make sure you get some primer on there. Okay, let's let that dry. It's always good to put something underneath you because this stuff drips and if it gets anywhere, uh, you're never getting the purple back out. So, if you got nice floors, put some cardboard underneath. Okay. So everything's primed. And for PVC cement, you want to make sure that it's like liquid. If it gets jelly-like, it's gone bad. Go get yourself a new uh, new container of it. Otherwise, it won't work properly. So, what we have, we're gonna go with our coupling, our three-inch piece. We're gonna go with our long uh, ninety because it's drain. And we're going to go with a two and a half inch section and then we go with our coupling which will go on to the p-trap so it has that little compression fitting in there and then everything else from that point on will be adjustable and we can uh, push down on it and move it around as we need so it's not a hundred percent we need to be exactly in the right spot because we have a little wiggle room with the p-trap itself so all right so with this, because it's flammable, both of these are, so be in a well-ventilated area. Don't be smoking while doing it, and uh, stay away from live electrical lines. So I'm only going to glue one side at a time. So I'm going to glue this side of the coupling and that, and then I'll glue them together. And you got to be pretty quick. When you push them together, you want to get it like a quarter turn, and you got to hold it there for 30 seconds. Otherwise, it'll actually push back out, and then you can have some issues where you get a leak. Then you have to cut everything out, which is not fun. Now we're going to put our next section on. So we're going to glue the piece, 
and glue the connection that it goes into. Right. Give that a quarter turn, hold it there. Make sure you count 30 seconds, otherwise it could push back out. Now this one matters, we want to get this to about where we want it, right about there. Hold it for 30 seconds. For this, I'm actually going to cut it down a little bit. Cut the P-trap down. So we're going to take this off. There's a little gasket that sits in here. Push on. Okay. That's a little compression fitting. Push that in. Try to line this up. need to loosen a couple of things up at the same time. Right. Get that nice and tight. Push these up a little bit. Tighten them up. P-trap, shouldn't get any leaks out of this, to our drain. Don't put any water through this for like two hours. Uh, it does take some time for the glue to dry, so I want to test it out right away. Let it dry, and uh, then I will come back and, and test it. Again, just want to tighten up this drain. So you're gonna use this, and just tighten it down. Now the other thing I have to deal with is these are not long enough to go down to my 3 8 inch uh, quarter turn valves down here for the cold and the hot. So what I need is something to extend that. So I have a 12 inch 3 8 inch to 3 8 inch compression uh, fittings and I need a way to couple them. So I have compression fittings here so I just need to take off the two sides of those and put one here and one there. So that's what we're going to do next. So I'll apologize in advance, this may be difficult to see what I'm doing, but I'm just going to take my 5 in, my five eighths inch uh, wrench. I'm going to be tightening this righty tighty lefty loosey, so we're going clockwise. You can get a finger tight in the beginning. And these are just compression fittings, you don't have to really go hard on them. With these, you don't want to kink anything. It says not to remove those, so I'll just put that up. So for the cold, come back here. We'll marry those two up. You can take off the ends for the conversion fittings because we actually have these guys. So I'll attach one on one side. So, and we can attach the other one right there.
Now, the real test, turn the water lines on. Okay, so they're pressurized. Okay, so they're on. This is where you want to take a check and make sure nothing's leaking. Okay, so that looks good. Now, let's see if this works. So the water's on. Open up the drain. Make sure nothing's leaking. I don't see any drips. So we're just going to run that water for a little bit. Get it on the hot. Get the air out of the line. There is an adjustment you can make here if you want. Uh, I didn't feel a need for that. It's getting nice and hot. So how it works. And the cold works. So everything looks good. So again, check for any leaks. What I like to do is install this bracket before I go in there. Uh, basically this piece is going to sit back here to get an idea. Your plumbing would be back here. The front of the vanity would be on uh, the other side. So all I did was take the two screws in this bracket, screw those two into the holes here. Uh, the vertical section piece is going to be this piece. It has two screws on the, the, the larger side, whereas the bottom piece has holes that would be on the, uh, you know, the narrow side. So we'll put this in place. Get a couple of our pins to put underneath. Uh, those are going to slide in here. So effectively it's going to look like this. So we'll put those pins in and then we can slide this on top of there. Okay. Let's push those in. Now, the part that has the two holes, which we've attached the metal bracket, that goes in the back. I'm going to slide those over top. Sometimes it's a little difficult to get these to line up. So I'll show you on this side. They lined up, went right in. And then on this side, I'm still gonna push them in. So do that next. There we go. That's very good. So I'm gonna put the, the upright here. I'm just going to put a pin in here and a pin in on the other side as well. Okay. Now, remember these two holes, they need to be on the bottom because that's where the bracket is. Slide this in, push this in place. If you can, put your hand back there and, and screw those in. It's 
It's also not a bad idea to leave it like this so that I can actually pull it out and get back to the plumbing if I need to. Make sure you have a really stubby screwdriver to even try to attempt this. Or get somebody with very small hands. So we're going to set these up. Just put the two side by side. I don't really see an upper or down when I was looking at the front. I'm going to put this kind of larger rounded section into this little hole. We're going to line those up screws and just tighten those down. Just remember when you do open these, they say don't cut the boxes for these panels because you'll slice right through the door. So don't do that. So now we have our door. to attach it into these four screw holes. It's actually really nice if you had somebody helping you. Kind of get it closed and get it started. Keeping everything pretty loose, at least till I get all four of them started. I just want to make sure everything lines up before I tighten anything down. That side's done. Now we'll put it on the next side. There you have it, a nice little vanity. One thing I would like to add is probably handles for that, but otherwise you're going to get dirty hands on a white uh, vanity and open from the bottom. So I'm probably going to end up drilling holes and putting handles on this eventually. All right, well, if you found that useful and helpful and you like it, do it yourself type videos, please subscribe. There'll be a lot more like this coming along as we keep remodeling this house. All right, thank you. Have a great day.